George Soros is back in the news. The seemingly immortal traitor, famous for being the man who broke the Bank of England, has said that with the exit of the UK, the disintegration of the EU is all but inevitable. As well, he has come out of retirement and is now actively trading, looking to reap ill-gotten gains from the chaos that he himself is helping to ferment. And this alone should make people nervous. But more on that in a minute. George Soros has donated more than $8 billion globally to his Open Society Foundations. It would be easy to assume Soros is a figure of global popularity. Only he isn't. He's almost the complete opposite. He's fermented revolutions, undermined national currencies, and funded radicals around the world. Soros is Esperanto for to soar, and it was his father's desire to see the borders of Europe fall, and it would appear that he had a strong influence on his son. And as a Jew, he stated that his experiences in World War II whilst working for the Nazis imbued him with the desire for what he terms open societies. A large part of Soros's multi-billion dollar fortune has come from manipulating currencies. During the 1997 Asian financial crisis, then Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohammed accused him of destroying the value of the Malaysian ringgit through his trading activities, and in Thailand, he was called an economic war criminal. Most famously, Soros initiated a British financial crisis by dumping 10 billion sterling, forcing the devaluation of the currency and gaining a billion dollar profit, thus earning him the title of the man who broke the Bank of England. Soros spends his ill-gotten booty on many things and in many ways. One of the more insidious activities he engages himself is the effort to control public discourse in Europe via his many organizations that create yearly indices, such as the World Press Freedom and Corruption Perceptions, which are financed by Soros through the Open Society Foundations. Most everywhere Soros, his investments, and his foundations have gone, trouble soon follows. For all intents and purposes, he is a one-man Illuminati machine. His fingerprints are all over many of the most contentious issues, as well as on conflicts that have even gone hot, largely thanks to his meddling. He told CNN's Fareed Zakaria that he's responsible for establishing a foundation in the Ukraine that ultimately contributed to the overthrow of the country's elected leader, Viktor Yanukovych, and the installation of a junta, handpicked by the State Department. This coup d'etat culminated in the War of Donbass that ended with over 9,000 killed on both sides and 22,000 wounded overall. As well, there were 1.4 million Ukrainians internally displaced and over 900,000 who fled abroad. Probably the most famous incident of this conflict was the shooting down of a Malaysian Airlines passenger jet killing all aboard, an incident that neither side took credit for and both blamed the other. In Russia, charities funded by Soros have been banned, saying they pose a threat to both state security and the Russian constitution. In the United States, he bankrolled and basically created the Black Lives Matter protest group by injecting $33 million into the movement. Black Lives Matter have also been described by many as a hate group. The financing of the Black Lives Matter and its fermentation of social chaos also led to the riots that thrice plagued the city of Ferguson, Missouri in 2014 and 2015, as well as the 2015 riots in Baltimore all of which has led to a striking deterioration in race relations within the U.S. The one country it would seem he does not want to ferment his signature-style chaos is in Israel as he defunded the radical feminist group Femmen when they attempted to open a branch in that country. But he has no problem fermenting chaos in other parts of the world. In May, Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary, accused Mr. Soros, who was also born in Hungary, of deliberately encouraging the migrant crisis. This invasion is driven on the one hand by people smugglers and on the other by those activists who support everything that weakens the nation state. This Western mindset and this activist network is perhaps best represented by George Soros. After it was revealed that Soros's NGOs distributed handbooks to migrants in the Balkans which offered advice on how they could illegally enter Europe, Soros was condemned by the Hungarian government. Mr. Soros has now issued an email statement to Bloomberg claiming his foundations help uphold European values, while Mr. Orban's actions in strengthening the Hungarian border and stopping a huge 
migrant influx undermine those values. His plan treats the protection of national borders as the objective and the refugees as an obstacle, Mr. Soros added. Our plan treats the protection of refugees as the objective and national borders as the obstacle. European Union supporter George Soros has claimed that Europe should take at least a million refugees every year and let them choose where they want to live. But he knows that Europe cannot afford to pay for all of this. In another interview, Mr. Soros has further admitted that it would be impossible for the EU to finance this expenditure out of its current budget, and so advocates their taking on additional debt instead. Mr. Soros states flatly that in part, as a result, the EU is on the verge of collapse and that the very survival of the EU is at risk. And when speaking specifically on the decision of the UK to leave the EU, he was very clear. Now the catastrophic scenario that many feared has materialized, making the disintegration of the EU practically irreversible. It's also been shown conclusively that the Merkel plan for Europe is in fact the Soros plan. Merkel, it would seem, like so many other politicians, is just another one of his puppets. In his latest article for the New Eastern Outlook, American author, researcher, and strategic risk consultant F. William Engdahl narrated that what was dubbed the plan turned out to be a string of inexplicable actions, including the violation of free speech, all to indulge the controversial and current Turkish regime. All of those seemingly inexplicable actions from the once pragmatic German leader appear to go back to her embrace of a 14-page document prepared by a network of pro-NATO think tanks, brazenly titled The Merkel Plan. Indeed, on October 4, 2015, the European Stability Initiative, an international think tank with headquarters in Berlin, Istanbul, Brussels, and Vienna, issued the Merkel Plan, a proposal for the Syrian refugee crisis, which was strikingly similar to the strategy that the German Chancellor has since recently pursued in Europe. Suspiciously, the authors of the ESI plan titled their plan as if it had come from the German Chancellor's office and not from them. More suspicious is the contents of the Merkel plan of ESI. In addition to already taking more than 1 million refugees in 2015, Germany should agree to grant asylum to half a million Syrian refugees registered in Turkey over the coming 12 months. In addition, Germany should accept claims from Turkey and provide safe transport to successful applicants already registered with the Turkish authorities. And finally, Germany should agree to help Turkey obtain visa-free travel. Sound familiar? The million-dollar question that arises then is who is behind the European Stability Initiative? Current ESI chairman directly responsible for the final Merkel Plan document is Istanbul-based Austrian sociologist Gerald Noss. Noss is also a member of the European Council of Foreign Relations and an Open Society Fellow. And in no surprise, the European Council on Foreign Relations is sponsored by Soros, and it is Soros who is the creator of the Open Society Foundations. Thus... Already it becomes clear that the Merkel plan is the Soros plan in fact. And Mother Merkel, as she is known to her millions of new male migrants from Africa and the Middle East, is also the inspiration to the Democratic nominee for the President of the United States, Hillary Clinton. And like Mother Merkel, the tentacles of Soros envelop not only Hillary and her husband Bill, but the entire Democratic Party of the United States. Soros is the man Victor Orban hears when Bill and Hillary Clinton open their mouths on democracy in Europe. Bill Clinton said recently that anti-migrant countries of Hungary and Poland decided democracy is too much trouble. Therefore, they want Putin-like leadership to keep foreigners out. Hungary's Orban slammed Bill Clinton as a puppet of billionaire George Soros for supporting his plan to flood the EU with millions of hostile Muslims. Beyond the American campaign, the remarks made about Hungary and Poland have a political dimension. 
Mr. Orban said, accusing Mr. Clinton of repeating Soros-inspired campaign lines. These are not accidental slips of the tongue, and the number of these slips or remarks have been multiplying since we are living in the era of the migrant crisis. And we all know that behind the leaders of the Democratic Party, we have to see George Soros. And Thomas Poreba, a former advisor to the Committees on Foreign Affairs and Regional Development in the European Parliament, alleged that Bill Clinton's recent foreign policy gaffe over Polish democracy was merely him following the orders of George Soros. But it wouldn't be too far of a stretch. Soros is the number one contributor to Hillary Clinton's run for the president. Moreover, WikiLeaks has released emails that show that Hillary had an open door for Soros, and they showed he conclusively held much sway over Clinton when she was Secretary of State under the Obama administration. Soros wants to curtail American sovereignty. Soros would like nothing more than to see America become subservient to international bodies. He wants more power for groups such as the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, while even saying the U.S. role in the IMF should be downsized. He wants the destruction of the nation-states of Europe and the elevation of the EU, while at the same time destabilizing nation-states for his own profit. He's paradoxical, and while he helps flood the continent with millions of unassimilatable migrants that the continent can ill afford, not only has he said that the EU may not survive the crisis, that he's helping to engineer, but that even if the bloc does manage to hold together, its future is bleak. He said that he saw Russia emerging as a global power as the European Union collapses in much the same way the EU flourished when the Soviet Union started falling. And this brings us back to the news that George Soros, the convicted insider trader who broke the Bank of England, has stepped back into trading personally in recent months. The Wall Street Journal reports that Soros is betting against America, adopting bearish derivative positions that serve as wagers against U.S. stocks. In simple terms, he's shorting America. Mr. Soros also sees a great recession-sized bubble in communist-controlled China that is about to burst, and he's doing everything he can to pop it, to the point that the Chinese state media on the 7th of June of this year have accused him of declaring war on their currency, trying to create panic for profit. He's betting that the American chaos he's helped fund, the bursting of the Chinese bubble he's helping pop, and the EU's collapse under the weight of a wave of illegal immigration he's helping crest, it's the U.S. economy that will pay the price. For context, the journal notes that the last time Mr. Soros became closely involved in his firm's trading, 2007, when he became worried about housing and placed bearish wagers over two years that netted more than one billion of gains. So here we have a man who has destabilized countries, contributed to the fermentation of ethnic civil war, has funded organizations in the U.S. that have helped feed race-baiting politics, and have spawned several citywide riots in the Midwest and East Coast. He is also helping fund a migrant crisis that could effectively see the EU dissolve. And he is betting that all of these crises combined will have the net effect of damaging the United States. And on top of all of this... He is shorting the U.S. and trying to make money from the chaos that he is helping stoke. And this is the mentor and paymaster to the U.S. Democratic Party and to Hillary Clinton, their standard bearer. A woman who adulates and says that she would emulate Chancellor Merkel of Germany as President of the United States. A Chancellor who, using the Soros plan for Europe, will most likely go down as one of the most incompetent and hated public figures in European history. Let that sink in. Many of the recent flashpoints of the world have been either created or flamed by Soros through his foundations and minions like Merkel. The fact that he is considered such a close and mentoring confidant to Hillary Clinton should send shivers of fear down any American voter's spine. If ever there was a Star Wars-esque Palpatine villain lurking in the shadows of global politics, it would be George Soros. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. The channel will be updated regularly.